LCTR here, and would you believe it, but Planetside 2 has pushed out another update to the game. It's added brand new content, and also rejigged the way that the previously paid-only robo-soldiers are accessed. That's right, if you're a free player, then you can now get your Roger Roger activated. So once again, let's review what's new in Planetside 2, and ask, is it worth playing? As always, it's nice to see more content and continued active development for this game that first saw the light of day in 2012. There's lots of new additions, and one unfortunate subtraction that was caught in the crossfire of refactoring how the NSO robot characters actually work in the game. Before, if you wanted to play as one of the floating robot faction, all you needed to have was an active all-access membership, and hence you were paying monthly for that privilege. Now, with this new integration update, the robots have been set free, and any player can opt to play an NSO character on the server of their choosing. When you play that character, you are automatically added to the lowest population faction for that server at that specific time. You might be NC one day and Vanny the next. The only negative to this change is that existing NSO outfits can no longer float between the factions as they did before. They will be given some time to pick a home faction and will be migrated to them at a later date. But that can't happen currently, as some more development work needs to still be done. As such, they're kind of in a frozen position where new people can't join them and they can't deploy things like war assets like the Bastion Carriers. I can imagine this smarts a little for the people who were actively playing the Inesu robot outfits before this latest update. It isn't just access to the robots that's been added to the game though. We've also had the addition of two new vehicles in the shape of the Dervish aircraft and Chimera tank. The Dervish is basically NSO's fighter aircraft, with the difference being that this is a two-person vehicle that trades some of its counterpart's maneuverability with some durability. This is an air-to-air -air vehicle like the other ESFs are meant to be. Just because it's two-seater doesn't mean it's intended as a liberator alternative for peppering the ground and farming spawn room doorways. Visually, the Dervish arguably takes camo better than any other vehicle in Planetside 2. There seems to be large swathes of the fuselage that are affected by the cosmetic options. That means that the look can be really rather different depending on your personal preference. For what it's worth, I'm rather fond of the shiny bare metal look. I don't profess to be a massively skilled pilot or really even an averagely skilled one. So if you are one of those players who spends their time in the skies, please do leave a comment with your thoughts on this new aircraft. I'm very interested to know your opinions on it. And just a quick aside to say, if you are enjoying this video, please do tap that thumb up button. It helps me out with YouTube and discoverability and all that kind of stuff. And if you tap that subscribe button right now as well, that really is appreciated. Thank you. The new tank, the Chimera, is arguably the best looking vehicle in Planetside 2. The visual design seems to be more resolved and developed than any that have come before, including those added in this update. I know this is a personal thing, but I think the quality difference is just a massive jump compared to something like the Lightning, that to the average person in the street might even look like they've come from different games. It's a tank, but interestingly, it doesn't actually feature the tracks like other main battle tanks in the game do, so it can't do that on-the-spot pirouette, it needs to be driven forward and backwards to actually maneuver. It's also unique in the game for being a main tank without a unique ability, whereas the Vanguard has the shield, the Mag Rider, the boost, and so on. There are unique facets to the Chimera though, the presence of six rumble seats on the outside isn't something that we've had before, so it's kind of a troop carrier as well, a sort of cabriolet sunderer with a cannon, or I guess a couple cannons. I do wish the rumble seats had more than a 180 degree field of view though, I'm guessing having them function more as like mini turrets might lead to some issues even though that would be quite funny. I've heard some people say it's a bit underpowered, and without a unique ability you can perhaps see why in a 1v1 with another tank you might be feeling a bit down on options. But like all of this new content, it'll probably take a balance pass or two to get it to a place where the community considers it to be in the current meta. Perhaps increasing the firepower is worthy of it not having a unique ability of its own? Make it something of a glass cannon sort of tank? Let me know your thoughts in the comments on this too. Even as free players have access to the robots now, a vehicle that isn't technically new is now available to all. That's the Javelin Hover Bike. This bike was originally in a title that we dare not speak its name. Voldemort. No, sorry, I mean Planetside Arena. It was fun to use over there, so its inclusion in Planetside 2 was welcome before. So it's even more welcome now that all players have access. 
Is it slightly odd to see it as the only hover vehicle on the NSO side? I mean, maybe. The Chimera feels perhaps even more grounded than the other vehicles with its use of wheels over tracks, but we don't really have Empire-specific single-seat vehicles, otherwise Vano would be the clear favourite for the hoverbike tech, you would have thought. The actual NSO robots themselves are still as cool a design as when they were when they were announced. They have some unique cosmetic helmets and armour sets too, but their visual design is just great to my eyes. The NSO weapons, probably less so. I do like the repeated angle motif, but there's a lot of mass to the middle of them that makes them look a little clunky to me. Again, it's massive personal preference here. It does mean though that there are a suite of new weapons to try. Araxiums are available for all players, so if grinding numbers and unlocking rare loot is your thing, then there are now a number of new challenges added. I've not talked about this much, but performance seems in a pretty reasonable spot at the moment. The game still struggles when there are literally hundreds of players in a single location, but really I don't know of another title that actually handles that any better. For the most, in normal sized fights, you can expect almost into three figure frame rates on newer decent systems, which feels like a long way from when the game first launched. Player numbers have taken a jump with this patch as you might imagine. Looking at the numbers on the PS2 population site, we link in the description of course, it's not the massive jump scale that we've seen in previous big ticket updates like the Bastion Carrier or whatnot, but 16% on month increase is nice to see. For new players, I'd say stick to playing on a server that's in their prime time when you like to play, so it's that sort of evening sweet spot. That way, you'll be on the server when it's most busy, and it's most easy to get into those unique planet-side scale fights. So with this latest update, is it worth playing? If you like the game already, then this latest update gives you more options to play on the servers you already do, or even create an alt on another server if you also play at odd times. There are new vehicles to use, new weapons to try out, and a new view on the world as a mercenary fighting for the underdog. For new players, it probably adds another layer of complexity to what you do when you actually play, though I think this NSO content is gated behind a mission to actually unlock it, so new players aren't making that organic versus robotic decision as they make their first character. But it seems like an almost wholly positive update that allows all players to experience Planet Side 2 in a different way, and it might just help out balance some server populations while it's at it. What's more, it even seemed to deploy okay on day one. I've not really seen talk of major issues, which is of course nice. All that you loved about Planet Side 2 is still here the scale, the teamwork, and yes, apparently there is some. It's maintained and celebrated in this latest edition. It may not have the titanic feeling that some of the previous updates have had on landing. Yes, that floating bastion carrier is hard to beat in that way, but updates like this help things feel fresh and hopefully keep the community engaged. I have no hesitations in saying that if you like this game already, or if you're a new player interested in learning why this game from 2012 is still beloved for creating gameplay not available in any other title, then there's no better time to download this new update and check out Planet Side 2. What do you think of this update? Are you now a robo main? How much do you want Roger Roger to be a voice line callout? Let me know all your powerful thoughts and feelings by leaving a comment below right now. And as always, I'll be reading every single one of them. If you did like this video, please tap the old thumb up button and make sure you're subscribed with notifications enabled so you know when the next video is ready for your perusal. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.